Welcome to the weekly video where we talk about the Big Ten schools and how they did in football this week. No Michigan video, obviously, as they were on a bye week. Uh, so Michigan won't be talked about at all today. Uh, we're just going to talk about the other 10 teams that played today. Uh, a few teams are on a bye week. Michigan, Michigan State, a couple other teams. Um, let's just start from the top, not waste any time. Um, so noon game here. Uh, Iowa on the road at Ohio State. This game was weird because it's like Ohio State has such a high-powered offense, right? And Iowa is got a really terrible offense. They didn't have a single uh, score on offense, a single touchdown on offense. They only have one field goal, and I think that was because they got the ball in their own territory um, to start that drive. Uh, they looked really bad. Uh, C.J. Stroud and this Ohio State offense looked like they could be beat. They were getting beat in this first half. They were getting pushed around by this Iowa defense. And we knew that like Iowa's defense is really good uh, and everything. Um, but it was weird because the score was like 26 to 10 Ohio State. But Iowa... You know, Iowa was pretty much doing everything right and still losing. That's what it felt like. Um, they were doing everything right defensively. Uh, offensively, uh, they couldn't get out of their own way. Just turnover after turnover. They put they took out Spencer Peters for this game. I don't know if he even started. And they played, uh, what, what is it, Padilla? I don't remember his first name. Um, Padilla. Um, and... Iowa's offense had three or two tur two turnovers in three plays. Absolutely ridiculous. Ohio State had their own uh, fair share of of uh, turnovers as well. One play when it was three nothing Ohio State, Iowa guy came out of nowhere on the defense, blasted C.J. Stroud. He dropped the football, picked it up. The same guy picked it up and ran it in for a scoop and score. And that was the only time Iowa ever had a lead in that game. Uh, they never had a lead in that game for after that uh ohio state scored again a touchdown this time and uh iowa couldn't respond that was pretty much the end of it um so this iowa defense did a great job in this game even until i mean not in the second half they didn't do great in the second half but in the first half they played really good and they seemed like they were getting having their way defensively but once again and I've harped on this, and I've said it every week. Kirk Ferentz, I don't know why this man insists on the defense being the answer to everything. Yes, defense wins championships. Yes, a great defense will get you really far in the season. Um, but if you have an offense that's so inept, a, an offense that is so just laughingly, laughably bad, just so difficult to watch watching iowa's offense is absolutely pathetic um like there's nothing i can say about iowa's offense there other than it's it's terrible uh somehow their backup quarterback is worse than petrus and petrus is not good spencer petrus is not a good quarterback and it feels like he's been there forever as well um ohio state pretty much had their way in this game you could tell they were the better team, but Iowa, Iowa was, was doing well defensively. Uh, you, you, in the first half, you, you know, Iowa's got a good. Everyone knows Iowa's got a really good defense, but your defense can't win you every game. It's just you have to have somewhat of an offense. Even if they had an average offense, they'd be able, they would be able to win a lot of games that way uh, with how good their defense is. But with that offense being as terrible it as as it is. They just can't win. There's just no way. Um, C.J. Stroud and Ohio State, on the other hand, it was pretty much a tale of two halves. Uh, first half was weak. I think they had a 19 to 10 lead at halftime or something like that. Uh, they got in the end zone or they got in the red zone several times and had to kick field goals. They only had one offensive touchdown and then like four field goals. Um, and they had a pick six, I believe. Um, and that was what gave them the 26 points, uh, made it 26-10. So four field goals, a pick six, 
and one offensive touchdown uh, run. Um, but the second half came around, and Ohio State blew them out, had plenty of big plays, and looked like the Ohio State team we're used to seeing. Uh, really impressive. This is the most amount of points Iowa has ever allowed in Kirk Ferentz's tenure there, and he's been there since 1999. So that that's a... That's a pretty uh, long stretch there. He's been there over 20 years. So um, Ohio State wins. Uh, I guess C.J. Stroud said it uh, in the interview after the game that they were a little rusty and they needed to get rid of that rust. And it looks like he was right because that's exactly what happened. Um, looked like the rust was gotten rid of and they uh, they went out. Ohio State went out there and did Ohio State things. Um, so Ohio State wins 54 to 10 in this one. If I didn't say um, that was the final score. Maryland and Northwestern. Close game here uh, was actually pretty good. Uh, Talia Tonga Viola did not play in this game for Maryland, so I'm going to give Maryland the benefit of the doubt here. I'm going to give them a break. Talia Tonga Viola is hurt. I, I don't know when he's coming. Um, and, you know, their backup didn't play terrible. Um, he had a decent game. Nothing crazy, but a decent game. But you could tell watching this game that Talia was severely missed on this Maryland offense. Um, this game was close for a while. Northwestern had a lead for a large portion. It was kind of back and forth, especially towards the end of the game. Uh, Maryland ended up pulling away in the end, winning 31-24. to So I'm going to give Maryland the benefit of the doubt here because their quarterback is hurt. I know everybody, every team's got injuries, but with a guy like Talia on uh, Maryland's team, that really, it's a quarterback, and he's a very good quarterback for them. So uh, I don't know. They, they, they escape disaster also i apologize ohio state plays penn state next week um at penn state uh it's at noon um i'm surprised this wasn't the whiteout game i don't know why they didn't make that the whiteout game but whatever uh and uh because that would have been great i don't know if it would have made a difference but uh, ohio state on the other hand um yeah when oh yeah, Ohio State at Penn State, and Iowa is what I meant to say. Uh, they play uh, Northwestern at home, so uh, who knows? Northwestern Northwestern is looking better, honestly. I, I'm not saying that they, right now, to me, they still look like a team that's going to lose the rest of their games. They could go 1-11. They still don't have a win. They haven't had a win since August uh, when they beat um, Nebraska. In week zero, uh, they haven't won a game since. They have lost six straight. They're one and six now. So, uh, yeah, Iowa plays Northwestern. Northwestern plays Iowa and uh, Maryland next week. Is it next week or the week after? They're on a bye week next week, but after that, they're on the road at Wisconsin. So, uh, Maryland's got a rest week next week. They're six and two now, so decent record, but not enough, not good enough to keep them in the Big Ten East race right now. I don't think they're only one game behind uh, Penn State, but they're two games behind Michigan and Ohio State. So, uh, unless all those teams just start losing a bunch of games for no reason, I don't think Maryland's winning the East. Um, and there's only a handful of games left. It's it's just not gonna happen, man. Um, Maryland is bound for a fourth place or fifth place spot in the Big Ten East race just because of how powerful the Big Ten East is this year. Um, Northwestern, on the other hand, they are. I mean, they're not a good football team, but they look better today than they have. They were able to get in the end zone, and that's really been an issue for them. But another thing that really has plagued them and is continuing to plague them is turnovers. Um, they had a lot again. They've had, I think, two. And that's like the sixth week in a row of having at least one turnover in a game. That that needs to be cleaned up if you're Northwestern. Um, but uh, Maryland gets the win uh, at home. And, uh, yeah. Uh, who did it? Uh, yeah, they got they're on a bye week next week, so Maryland can rest up. Hopefully, get Talia back, and uh, 
yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. And like I said, Northwestern plays Iowa next week. <sighs> Wisconsin and Purdue do. What have I been saying about Purdue? They're inconsistent as hell, dude. Seriously. Um, Purdue can win all these games in a row and go out and crap the bed against a bad Wisconsin team. And yes, Wisconsin's not a good football team. They're 4-4. Four and four. They have a losing record in the Big Ten. Uh, but they won, they won today. They were dominating this game. Purdue kind of crawled their way back in, but it was too late. Uh, at one point, I think Wisconsin was up 21 to nothing. Uh, 38 24 was the final one, if I didn't say. Um, bringing Purdue down to 5 and 3 now, and they're uh, 3 and 2 in the Big Ten uh, West. So they're probably still in it in the West because I don't think there's any team in the West that doesn't have a loss. Even Illinois has a loss. Uh, and they didn't play this week either. Um, that's another team that did not play. Um, so pretty much uh, Wisconsin and Purdue were, the, I guess, two of the better teams that were playing on the west side um, since Illinois wasn't playing today. And uh, Minnesota did play as well, but we'll get to them. Um, Wisconsin wins. They looked like a Wisconsin team that beat that beats up on lesser teams. Uh, realistically, in a normal year, they should beat with Purdue every year. Um, and that's exactly what they did. They beat Purdue. Purdue crawled their way back in a little bit, but they couldn't They couldn't keep up uh, after that. It was too late. Um, they dug themselves into too deep of a hole they couldn't crawl out of. Uh, and Purdue ended up losing this game and i've been saying it for weeks man i mean purdue has impressed me these last few weeks but obviously they didn't impress me today i was thinking about making the big 10 losers but uh there's one team that made that list and we'll get to them um but hey congratulations to wisconsin for finally getting a decent win um uh they got maryland on november 5th uh, as I talked about before, and Purdue, do. Uh, they've got Iowa um, because they're on a bye week next week as well. Uh, Purdue is, so they got Iowa on November fifth. Rutgers, Indiana. Rutgers gets their first. Listen to this. Their first home conference win. Since 2017, five years of losing at home against conference opponents and Indiana. Let, what a surprise. Indiana was the team that gave it to them. Dang, Indiana. Indiana. Uh, it was a close game, though. 24-17. Uh, this was a game that was kind of back and forth. Indiana, I thought, was going to run away with this game. They excuse me they took a 14 nothing lead uh, early in the game i was like uh oh here we go rutgers is gonna get blown out aren't they uh, but no rutgers crawled their way back in um and i think made it 17 to 14 um or something like that held that lead for a while and ended up winning 24 to 17 so good win for rutgers finally a conference home win um uh, since 2017 when they beat maryland um, so, I mean, there's that. I, I got to give them that. Uh, Indiana, I mean, it's same old Indiana. Uh, I don't really have anything to say. Rutgers is not a good team. They have a four and three record, but one and three in the in the conference. This is their first conference win. So not only is it their first conference home win in five years, but it's their first conference win of the season. Uh, so one and three now is Rutgers. Congratulations to Rutgers. 24-17, Rutgers gets the job done. Rutgers uh, next week plays on the road at Minnesota, so that'll be tough. I don't see him winning. Uh, Indiana, um, yeah, they're on a bye week next week, but after that, November 5th, they got Penn State at home. Uh, they'll probably lose that one bad. Remember when everyone was, um, or you know what? People are still doing it. Uh, I shouldn't say remember when because it's still happening and I know it's still happening because I know people in my personal life 
that are still saying these things to me. And they sound more and more retarded every time I talk to them about it. Oh, Michigan, Michigan ain't played nobody. They, 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 they haven't played anybody. Michigan's 7-0 and and in the top five. And we have a top 10 win. Yes, I know they're not top five any uh, top ten anymore, but they were when we played them. Ooh, uh, Penn, Penn State's overrated. They're probably going to lose to Minnesota. They just blew out Minnesota. They just blew out Minnesota. Um, a week after Michigan beat Penn State by a hundred points, uh, Penn State beat Minnesota by a hundred points. So basically, the people that were saying early on, oh, Minnesota could beat Michigan if they made it in the Big Ten Championship, looks like Michigan would win by a significant amount of points uh, if they had, were to come up. Obviously, I know it's a different environment, different game, and anything can happen. One team could be on, one team could be off. But generally speaking here, Michigan is significantly better than Penn State is, and Penn State's significantly better than Minnesota. Um, so uh, connect the dots. Uh, you idiots out there. Um, Minnesota, you are my Big Ten losers this week. Um, for losing, what is this now, three games in a row? Uh, let me look at this. This is probably um, the worst stretch I've ever seen. You won your first four games, uh, beating New Mexico State 38 to nothing. You beat the life out of West Illinois. I mean, West Illinois, I think, I don't think they've had a single win in like 15 years or something. Uh, no, that's exaggeration, but they don't win a lot is what I'm saying. They beat Colorado 49-7, to which Colorado is one of the worst teams in college football. Um, I don't think they even have a win yet, or maybe they have one. But, and no one was really like, eh, you know, Minnesota, they're beating up on lesser opponents. But then they went out there and beat the life out of Michigan State, 34 to 7 at Michigan State. And I was like, holy crap, you know, Minnesota was up 34 to nothing at one point. I was like, dang, you know, maybe, maybe Michigan, uh, maybe Minnesota is really good. And they, after that game, they got put in the rankings uh, and, and everything was, uh, everything was hunky dory. They're riding high, 4 and 0. Look at Minnesota, they're really good. And then they lost three in a row and kind of just fell off the face of the earth. Um, and it all started with a loss to Purdue, who, to be fair, is a pretty okay team, a decent team, uh, 20 to 10. And then they went um, on the road, lost to Illinois, 26 to 14. So like, oh, okay, well, you know, Illinois is a good team too. And then they get blown out by Penn State in the wideout, um, 45-17. So, what's wrong with Minnesota? Perhaps they were overrated. And this is the funniest thing. People are telling me Michigan's overrated. Ooh, they won't beat Penn State. Penn State will beat them by 20. I literally had people telling me that. They'll beat Penn State will beat them by 20 if Michigan even had a chance of making it to the Big Ten Championship. They'd lose to Minnesota. Minnesota's not even going to make the Big Ten Championship. You know who's probably going to make the Big Ten Championship on the west side? Illinois. And Michigan plays them before Ohio State. So we'll see how good Illinois really is. Um... Yeah, obviously those things aren't happening. Michigan's still 7-0 and and in the top five. And Minnesota's 4-3. and And uh, I think now they're fifth in the Big Ten West. Fifth! Minnes, what has happened to Minnesota? You know, I, I was thinking, you know, okay, well, Purdue is a... Uh, Purdue is a fluky win, you know, whatever. Purdue's a decent team, so it's it's it seems kind of fluky. Purdue gets these fluky wins every once in a while. They've to just look in years past, that's happened. Illinois is a good team this year, legitimately good team. So, you know, like still piss poor performance, but like, you know, Illinois is a good team. And then they get blown out by Penn State. They needed to at least be close in this game or competitive to even be considered a good team. Um they are not a good football team, like we all thought they were. Because their first three opponents, let's be real, are terrible teams. And Michigan State's not good either. 
they have, I mean, all those teams that those first four teams Minnesota played losing records are all really bad teams. Colorado is one of the worst teams in college football. And, and I get everyone was riding high on them after that Michigan State game because it, it was impressive. No matter you know what Michigan State record is or not, it was still an impressive win. Minnesota doesn't win games like that against teams like Michigan State. So it was like, wow, look at look at Minnesota. Um, but I mean, I don't know, man. Minnesota, your your schedule gets a little easier. That was this was a tough three game stretch. I will give you that, but. With everyone talking about how good they are, um, you should have won at least two of these. At least two. Uh, per losing to Purdue, I don't. I won't understand that. I can, if you could have, if you would have beaten Purdue and at least have been competitive in the Illinois and Penn State game, I wouldn't be on you right now. But you lost all three of these games, and you lost, and you lost bad in all three of these games. They were all losses. By double digits. The Purdue game you lost by 10. Um, you've lost all three of these games in double digit points. You got Rutgers um, at home next week. So who knows if you'll even win that. Because apparently Rutgers is better at winning on the road. Um, you got them next week at 2.30 on the Big Ten Network. So sit back and watch that classic next week. Um Minnesota, I don't know what happened. They just that everyone was talking about Minnesota, and then as soon as they lost to Purdue, everyone just kind of forgot about them, and now no one no one cares about Minnesota anymore. Sucks if you're Minnesota, and I, I and I understand also Tanner Morgan's hurt. I get it, but do you really think Tanner Morgan was going to make that much of a difference? Mm, maybe, maybe not. He didn't really make much of a difference in that Illinois game. Uh, he was in, in that he was in that game until the fourth quarter, and he would he had a horrible game, like four of twelve passing. I mean, I don't know how much Tanner Morgan really would have helped. I, I don't know. Maybe Tanner Morgan needs to just move on and go try and get in the NFL. He looks like he's thirty five years old anyway. I'm just teasing. I I like Tanner Morgan, but he he looks way older than a college student. <laughs> Um, but Minnesota, you're my Big Ten losers this week. First time making the list, I think. Uh, so congratulations there. Uh, Penn State uh, dominating. This is the bounce back win they needed. Uh, they dominated this game, and it was pretty much clear from the start, kind of like the Michigan game last week, that Penn State was the better team and was going to win this game pretty big, uh, especially with that whiteout environment, which always looks incredible. Uh, I gotta give Penn State that. I I love the whiteout. I just I think it's so awesome looking, especially at night. Uh, I wish Michigan would do the maze out at night again because that looks also incredible. Um, and I think Ohio State does like a blackout. There's a lot of good traditions in the Big Ten where like you every every fan wears the same color. It's a night game and it just looks incredible. Um, Penn State's got one of the best ones in the Big Ten in terms of that and. Penn State needed this win. Now it's a bounce back win for them. So um, now they're six and one and bowl eligible. So there you go. Um, bowl eligibility for uh, for Penn State six and one now. And what are they in the uh, in the conference? Three and one. Um, and did I say already? Minnesota play Rutgers at oh, yeah. I said that Minnesota uh, plays Rutgers at home. Penn State got that Ohio State game next week. Huge huge game. Uh, and they were saying this on the Big Ten Network on the final drive. If you watch the final drive, uh, I do. But um, I watch a lot of people. But um, they were saying this, and I agree with them. This Penn State team, we're going to know a lot more about how they really are in this Ohio State game than we did against Michigan, the Michigan game and in the Minnesota game. Watching both of those games, it was clear as day that Michigan was a much better team than Penn State. Is a much better team than Michigan. Than, uh, than, did I say Michigan State? Penn State. I apologize. I'm thinking of Michigan State now. Um, it is as clear as day that Michigan is better than Penn State. Um, and it is clear as day that Penn State is better, way better than Minnesota. Now, I think Ohio State is way better than um 
than uh, Penn State is. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. They get it at home, so there's that at least. Um, so uh, there we go. That is um, that is the week uh, of Big Ten football. Let's take a look here at uh, the games we got for next week. Um, and the times have already been announced for all these Big Ten games, so that's pretty cool to see. You don't see it this early, usually. Ohio State, number two Ohio State, 7-0, 4-0 in the Big Ten against number 13 now, Penn State, because the rankings are out when I'm making this video. Uh, the new eight people has come out there, number 13 now, um, at Penn State, uh, noon on Fox. So that's the big noon kickoff game right there. Uh, hopefully it's a good game. Ohio State's a 14 and a half point favorite. Um, honestly, I feel like that's too small. I, 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 I mean, of course I can hope for a good game, but who knows? Uh, probably not. Um, Rutgers, Minnesota. What a banger that'll be. Minnesota's a 12 point favorite. Illinois, Nebraska. This one could be interesting. Illinois is a five point favorite. Illinois is on a roll. Uh, they have that one weird loss to Indiana in the conference, but I feel like that was pretty fluky. Uh, I think if they played again, Illinois would win significant by a significant amount. But we don't play; they don't play each other again, so we can't go based off of the what would happen or what could happen or if this happened. Uh, we just can't do that. Um, Illinois lost to Indiana, and that's just how it is. But this is going to be a big game here for both teams. I mean. If Nebraska can win this game, uh, they'll be tied with Illinois in the Big Ten West race. This is a big game for Nebraska, so Nebraska needs to win this game to still be in that race. They would be first in the Big Ten West if they could win, or tied for first in the Big Ten West, but they'd have the same record in the conference, 3-1, and one, but Nebraska would have that tiebreaker, so they would be number one, um, even though they're tied. Uh, they would have that tiebreaker over Illinois. Illinois needs to win this game to pretty much, I guess, cement their spot or further cement their spot in the top of the Big Ten West, which is just weird because you just don't ever see Illinois in the top of the West. They're usually on the bottom, honestly. Um, so that'll be a good game, hopefully. Uh, that'll be an interesting game. Uh, Northwestern and Iowa. Northwestern's got an absolutely this will be just a defensive game right here what a juggernaut of a game this is gonna be <laughs> that one's on 330 northwestern iowa both teams have got terrible offenses but iowa's got a really good defense while northwestern really doesn't have a great defense so northwestern's not really good at anything are they i was a 10 point favorite did i say illinois is a five point favorite i probably did and then of course michigan state on the road against Michigan, likely in a blue out uh, here um, for Michigan. Uh, hopefully it's a blue out. Uh, the crowd's wearing all blue and the players are wearing all maize because that would just look awesome. We haven't seen the all maize uniforms since 2017 against Florida. Um, but uh, yep, big game there. Um, obviously for Michigan and some people are probably like well, why is that a big game Michigan State's unranked they're three and four they've got no chance of winning the East Michigan is seven and oh four and oh in the Big Ten fourth ranked in the country going into this game they're clearly the better team more talented better coached they should win this game but yes and I agree with you but they beat us last year uh, and there are sole regular season loss and we got to win this game, uh, is all I'm saying. I think we will. I think we're going to go out there and beat them down. Um, hopefully. Hopefully that happens. Um, so, big game there. Um, let's look at the standings here because I want to really get a good look at this. Oh, dang it. I got to go to the, uh, the Big Ten. So, in the East, Michigan, Ohio State, obviously 4 0 in the conference. Um, then you got Penn State three and one, Maryland at three and two. They're on a bye week next week, and then everyone else is one and three, one and three, and one and four. I mean, Maryland's the only one that even is a little bit in there, you know, a little bit in that race. 
uh, I really don't know what to say um, about the Big Ten East. It's kind of just a two-way race at this point, and unless some crazy stuff happens. Because honestly, if Penn State beats Ohio State next week, they're tied for second place. And uh, if Michigan can win, obviously. That, that's the dream right there. Penn State beats Ohio State and Michigan beats Michigan State. That would be make for a great weekend for me. Um, because not only would Michigan beat Michigan State, um, but they would uh, also be number one in the in the East. Um, so, I mean, I hope that can happen. But, you know, you never know. You never know. Um, but yeah, uh, the West is a little more interesting because you got you got Illinois at three and one. You got Purdue at three and two. You got Nebraska at two and two, and Wisconsin two and three. Yeah, I think they're probably out. So it's pretty much just a race between Illinois, Purdue, and Nebraska right now. Illinois sits top right now. Um, but like we were talking about, Illinois and Nebraska play this weekend, uh, and Purdue's on a bye week, so take them out of the equation if illinois beats uh or if nebraska beats illinois um then would nebraska be on top have they played purdue uh they have and they lost uh, oh yeah that game happened was it last week yeah it was last week uh purdue lost or purdue won the game against uh nebraska so if Nebraska beat Illinois, um, well, they'd be three and two. And uh, is Illinois and Purdue played? No, they haven't. They don't play. They ha they play in a couple of weeks. They play on November twelfth. So that'll be a big game for the Big Ten West race. Um, honestly, though, when it comes down to it, I don't think it really matters who wins the West. Sad as it is, I don't think whoever wins the west should is not they're not going to win the big 10 championship they're just not you've got one ranked team in the big 10 west illinois you've got three in the big 10 east i mean not a lot but you know you got three and they're all in the top 15 two of them are in the top five one of them's in the top 15 and they got illinois who's not very far behind uh, Penn State, and I don't know actually if they play each other. They do not. They do not play each other. Penn State and Illinois. Uh, I, does Ohio State play Illinois? No. Michigan plays Illinois, uh, and they play Illinois second to last week of the season for Michigan. They play Illinois, and then the following week we play at Ohio State. So that's going to be a tough stretch there. Um, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm saying. I don't, th whoever wins the East is not, whoever wins the West is not beating the winner of the East. I just, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. All right, I've gone on for 33 minutes. Might as well go quickly over the, the, uh, t t t uh, top 25. So Tennessee beat UT Martin 65 to 24. Clemson and Syracuse had a close game. Syracuse was up on this game, and I thought they were going to win, but Clemson came back and won this game, 27-21. Alabama beat the life out of Mississippi State, 30-6. I mean, they were up 21 to nothing in no time. Alabama was always going to win this game. I don't think anyone really gave Mississippi State a chance. LSU beat Ole Miss, 45-20. That was an unranked LSU team against a undefeated top-10 Ole Miss team. A game that LSU was actually favored in uh, by three, but even if they did win, I figured it'd be close, not a freaking 25-point uh, blowout. So, I mean, Ole Miss, what the heck happened? Uh, TCU and Kansas State had a somewhat close game. TCU continues to win. Um, Kansas State now has their second loss in the conference, or in, in the overall, their first loss in the Big 12. Uh, Oregon beat the life out of UCLA. Another team that was undefeated um, was UCLA that lost um, yesterday, um, 45 to 30. Um, Oklahoma State um, 
and Texas had a really good game. Oklahoma State ended up winning this one, 41 to 34. So Texas has their third loss. Um, Wake Forest beat Boston College, and a big, big win there, I guess, 43-15. Uh, we talked about Penn State, Minnesota, Cincinnati beat SMU 29-27. So not insanely impressive. And then Tulane beat Memphis 38-28. They were up big in that game and kind of let Memphis get back into it for some reason. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Is there any other interesting games I could mention? Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Kansas lost. That's a shame. It's their third loss. They were on such a good streak, too. Um, nothing I see. I'm looking through literally every game that happened yesterday in the FBS level. And nothing is interesting outside of what I've already talked about. All right. That is it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, see you guys next week for my hopefully good news on that Michigan State video. Uh, I'm going to have another video out uh, probably mid this week uh, with a little challenge for myself. Uh, something to do with that Michigan State game. So hope you guys are there for it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.